Welcome to episode 75, the accessories trends you need to know about for spring. Every season we have a fresh crop of trends to choose from, and that includes accessories. With everything from shoes to jewelry to handbags, there are so many amazing ways to update your look. In this episode, we'll discuss the 10 hottest accessories trends this season and how you can wear them. Easy updates to your current wardrobe using pieces you already own. How repurposing your accessories can bring them up to the moment. The quickest and easiest way to boost your style. One simple trick for adding the wow factor to your look. But first. Color is a powerful tool and the first thing people notice about you. But wearing the right colors can be overwhelming and confusing. If you're ready to wear color with confidence, I would love to be your guide. I'm launching my brand new color confidence package and I can work with you one-on-one -on -one if you're in the Raleigh, North Carolina area or we can work virtually anywhere in the world. I'm looking for a few women who are ready to learn more about color and take their color game to new heights. I'm offering this great package at an introductory price for just half off but I only have a few slots available. If you're ready to find out what your best colors are through color analysis, create your fabulous five color capsule, discover your signature colors and what colors to wear this season, then click the link in the bio and let's get started. I look forward to helping you wear color with confidence. Welcome to Style by Mary Michelle, a podcast designed to empower you through personal style. I'm your host, Mary Michelle Nidefer, a master style coach, founder of Style Finder Boutique, and creator of the Style Finder ID system. I'm here to help you know what to wear, how to wear it, and how to get dressed in seven minutes or less. Let's go. Hello, beautiful, and welcome back to the podcast. Today, I'm so excited to be bringing you the accessories trends. I know, I know I've been talking so much about the trends, and you guys have gotten bits and pieces here and there, but today I really want to focus on accessories because accessories, well, they're the icing on the cake, right? And they're the quickest way you can update your look. But I think when you really can pay attention to what the accessories are, what you'll find is it's a wonderful way to really elevate your look without spending a lot of time, without spending a lot of money. And honestly, a lot of these are things that you can look in your closet and you'll realize they're pieces I've already, I already have. And it's so much fun. You know, it's so interesting. I'm, I'm going to share some um, trends. Well, I'm going to share with you today the top 10 accessories trends. There are a lot of trends. I really invite you to, if you want to do a deep dive on what all the spring trends are this season, go grab my spring trends ebook. Actually, it's spring summer trends. My spring spring summer trends ebook. It is chock full of really what I feel like are the most wearable trends. Because you know, when you look at the trends, come, things coming down the pipeline, things coming down the runway. So many women come to me and say, "I can't wear these. They're not right for me. They're made for somebody who is half my age, or they just don't work in the real world." And it can be really complicated. But I look at it as it is my job to translate the trends just for you so you know what to wear and how to wear it. And I cannot wait to share with you all these very cool accessories. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and dive in because we've got a lot to cover. Now the first one, this is one that in my opinion could be a classic and I bet just about all of you have in your closet already. And the trend is called Pearl Core. Now I'm going to use, I'm using the official trend name just so you're you're familiar with it. So if you hear it, you know what that means because I want you to be in the know. But pearl core is number one. Pearl C O R E, and it's interesting. I don't know why they called it that, but basically it's pearls. But I want you to think about pearls in a new and different way. What we're seeing in the boutique, what we're sharing with our clients there, is pearls done differently. We're seeing pearls come out in ways that are a little bit less traditional. We're seeing pearls layered, maybe oversized pearls, pearls just worn in new and different ways. And so I want you to think about how can I wear my pearls differently? This is, I think the beauty of the spring trends is, or the trends any season, is it gives you a fresh perspective. If you walk into your closet every day and you wear the same thing the same old way, 
what are you going to do? You're going to fall into a rut pretty darn quick, right? And you're going to feel it. You're not going to feel fresh. You're, you're going to feel like, oh my gosh, I'm giving up. I don't feel good. I don't feel, feel like myself. So I want to encourage you to really find ways that you can freshen your look up that are easy. And as I mentioned, you probably already have pearls of some sort in your closet. Think about this though. There are so many ways to interpret the trends. What if you had a scarf or a jacket that has maybe pearl, like seed pearls scattered all over it? Or if you had pearl, a pearl collar or pearl detail on some accessory, a cuff or a handbag or a bracelet, it, it's just unexpected. And this really kind of shifts your focus so that you can see, wow, I have pearls. I can wear them in a new and different way. I already have them in my closet or in my jewelry box, and I can pull them out and I can wear them in a way that makes me feel up to date. That's really the whole point with this, in my opinion. It's not so you rush out and you get rid of everything that you have and you buy all new. That is never, ever the goal for the trends. It really is just to kind of put a spotlight on certain things so that you can see them in a new and different way. And I think the beauty of it is how you look at things. There's a great quote and it's when you're, what is it? When the things you look at, when the way you look at things changes, the things well, actually, I can't even remember what the quote is. It's something to the effect of when the way you look at something changes, what you, the things you look at will change. And so it's like seeing things in a new and different way. And then the way they appear is going to be fresh and new. And you're going to feel like, hey, I'm right on trend. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling confident. And you're just going to feel fabulous. So, but number two, I'm going to go ahead and tell you what other jewelry trend, a couple of other jewelry trends I'm going to spotlight. Now there, like I said, there are so many trends every season. There is pretty much no way I can capture all of them. And so if you see something or hear something and you haven't heard it here, well, don't think that it's not a trend. Just know that the scope of the trends is far and wide. Number two that I'm going to share with you, and again, you probably already have this in your jewelry box, gold chain necklaces, specifically layered gold chain necklaces. And so if you look in your jewelry box and you see, wow, I've already got these. I was in a client's closet recently and she had several gold chain necklaces. And so we, were, we realized we could put these together in new and different ways and create a fresh perspective for her. Because she wasn't normally wearing them that way. She was just wearing them sing singularly. But the other thing I would encourage you to do is mix your pearls with your gold chains or your silver chains, which silver jewelry, that's number three. Silver jewelry is hot, which is excellent news for my silver lovers out there. Now, I personally, I love both silver and gold and I wear it well. They're both my metals in my color palette. If you're not sure what your best metals are, I would love to work with you to do a personal color analysis. Now, I am offering a few spots for this, and I'll, I'm going to tell you what prompted this offering in a little bit. But uh, for now, I'm just going to let you know that I've got a great uh, color confidence package, and it is at an excellent price. Actually, it's the same price I charged when I first started in 2008. And I did this for a lot of reasons, but really because I just kind of wanted to reignite. I, my passion for color has been reignited for a lot of reasons. And I have had so many women reach out and ask me about just color analysis. And that's something I have not done a la carte in many, many years. But actually, I'm going to go ahead and tell you. I keep telling you I'm going to skip ahead and I just can't keep a secret, I guess. But I've decided to write a book. I'm writing a book about color, about how to wear color, because there's so much confusion. And I have learned, I tell clients when I start talking about color, I'm like, I could talk about color all day, how to wear it, how to pair it, what colors are right for you, how to even know what colors are right for you. And it's so fascinating. I've learned so much. And what I'm doing in my color offerings is um, it's a deep dive as well as a really easy way to wear color. So. Um, I've got all the info in the show notes. I would love to work with you no matter where you are. If you are in Raleigh, come see me. Let's work together in person. If you are outside of North Carolina, come visit or we can work together virtually. So 
but I would love to have you come for a visit. That would be great. But I have worked with clients all over the world to help them wear color with confidence. And it's just, it's amazing. In fact, I heard from a client recently who was all the way in New Zealand and she's like, oh my gosh, I see what a difference this has made. So shout out to Abby, if you're on here. Uh, you are wearing color with confidence and it's amazing. So love, 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 love seeing all that. Uh, all right. So number three was silver jewelry. Now it's interesting because we are seeing so much silver jewelry and it's great because a lot of people wear silver, but silver kind of comes and goes. And what I tell clients is if silver jewelry is your thing, now is the time to stock up because you're going to be seeing silver in pretty much everything. It's interesting when I've been ordering uh, jewelry for the boutique, so many things that used to come in just gold now come in gold and silver. So it, it just, it's wide open, but this is an opportunity for you silver lovers to stock up. Now, if you don't currently wear silver, does that mean you, that you need to start? No, not necessarily. But I do want you to think about, is silver a good metal for me? Does it work for me? And if it does, great, try it out. If it's, if it's not right for your skin tone, silver really works best on cool skin tones. Doesn't mean if you're warm, if you have warm skin tone that you can't wear silver. But the way I recommend that you do it is if you have a warm skin tone and you want to wear silver, wear a more matte silver. Don't wear a shiny silver because that's gonna create more contrast. Wear a more matte silver. And if you're not sure, then, you know, maybe if you want to dip your toe into that, maybe what you do first is go for a mixed metal, layer up some chains, get some mixed metal, bring up just a hint of silver, or maybe you have mixed metal chains around your neck. I'm not talking Mr. T chains here. I'm talking about just, you know, chains that work with your scale. Now I'm going to wrap, I'm going to send you to another podcast episode because in episode number 31, the secret power of accessories that is going to help you understand how to break the trends down and figure out what size is right for you. And so if you're thinking about, well, I want a silver chain or a gold chain. Do I get a really delicate chain? Do I get a big chain? Do I layer several big chains together? How do I know how much is too much? Well, go back and listen to episode number 31, Secret Power of Accessories, because I break it all down for you. And there is a science behind it. There is a rhyme and a reason. And I break it down in an easy way for you to understand. So go listen to that if you're not sure. And I want you to be able to layer with confidence. But here's my question that I want you to ask yourself. How do, how do I feel? If you put it on and you feel like, oh my gosh, I feel like these chains are wearing me, they probably are. But if you put them on and you feel like they disappear, they probably are. So find what works for you. But go listen to episode 31. That's going to fill you in all the details. Number four, we're going to skip to shoes because, you know, shoes, shoes are the bomb, right? Who loves shoes? Certainly me. I do love some shoes. So number five. And it's interesting. I'm going to talk about a couple of trends together because we've got some real polar opposites going on this season. Number five is feminine sandals. Really feminine, really delicate. But number six, lug sold sandals. Polar opposite, right? So what that tells me and what it should tell you is there's something for everybody. If you're of a more delicate stature, I would go for the more feminine sandals. It doesn't necessarily mean you can't wear lug sold sandals, but they may wear you. They may be a little overwhelming. And if you're of a, a larger stature, feminine sandals might be too delicate for you. They might look too dainty. They might look out of proportion. So play around with that. But it's interesting because last fall we saw so many lugs, lug, I can't even say it, lug sold boots. And they're great. They're great boots. And so now we're seeing that translated into a sandal. Although personally, I've been wearing them for years. <laughs> so, well, I shouldn't say lug soles. I'm, I'm more of a platform girl, which is number seven, platform shoes, platform sandals, platform boots, platform loafers. I love platforms because they give you a little bit of lift. I personally am not a heels girl. I'm just not. And I'm five, well, I used to be 5'10". <laughs> I'm 
about five nine and a half now, and Big Daddy is uh, six one. And if I wear heels, I tower over him, and I don't really like that. That just doesn't. I don't know. My my feminine girly side. I like my man to be taller than me. So platforms sometimes work, um, but you know, if I'm speaking or doing something. I do, you know, it's interesting. I do have a couple of kitten heels, which kind of, I guess, fall into the more feminine sandal arena, but kitten heels are really the best I'll do. The closest I get to heels. I'm just, I just don't feel right in heels. And I think for me, shoes have to be functional. I used to, ju- well, I'm, <laughs> I used to joke around and say my shoes had to double as weapons. So they need to, you know, I need to be able to defend myself and use the shoes to like run away or kick somebody or something because I used to, you know, I've traveled alone a lot and, you know, especially doing shows. I'm like, all right, I I cannot be in a position where I'm wearing high heels, walking through New York city by myself and feel good about it. So anyway, (laughs) just my own little personal sentiment. So number six was platform shoes. And yeah, that could be sandals, loafers, whatever, sneakers. Actually, I have some platform sneakers that I love. And we're going to talk about sneakers in a minute. But number seven, platform boots. You know, it's so interesting to me, the platform boots. And I'm not necessarily just talking about booties. I'm talking about like knee-high boots. And you're very 70s inspired. I'm surprised those are hot for spring because... You know, usually in spring, you're moving more towards a booty or something with a peep toe, but full on platform boots, the boots that have the platform sole and then the big chunky heel. And I've had some of those in the past. They're not really my jam anymore. Uh, They're a little too edgy. Well, I shouldn't say too edgy. They're a little too dangerous (laughs) for me right now. I just, I don't know. That's not my thing. That's not what I gravitate towards, but you know, if you love them, I know that there are some style icons out there who are loving them and look great in them. So if that works for you, you know it. It's, you know, it's really, it's a very 70s vibe to me, especially if you've got suede, you can have so much fun with that. But if that works for you, try some platform boots and see how those work. All right. Number eight, sneakers. All right. Now I'm going to talk about sneakers real quick because I mean, there's so many things I could say. I could do a whole podcast about sneakers. Sneakers are no longer a trend. Sneakers have crossed over to become a classic. Now the question isn't, are sneakers in style? The question is, what sneakers are in style? And if you heard what I talked about, the lug sold sandals, the platform shoes, the platform shoes, we're seeing a lot of those, well, maybe not the platform boots, we're seeing a lot of platforms and a lot of lug sold sneakers. We're seeing a lot of chunkier sneakers, high top sneakers. You know, some of the sneakers, remember the ones that used to rock? Uh, I forgot what those brands were, but that rock, you kind of rock with them and they're supposed to be really good for your legs. We're seeing a lot of those. We're seeing a lot of slip on sneakers. In fact, I just recently bought some great slip on sneakers and love them. I, they're black. And you know, it's interesting. I've been having a hard time with black shoes lately. Visually, I just sometimes feel like they're too heavy for me. I wear them sometimes, but if you follow me on TikTok, I put a video out there and in the video in one, I have on the same outfit and first I put on my black shoes, my black slip on sneakers. And then I put on my white leather Adidas. And I ask people, which ones do you like better? And it was so interesting. It really was split down the middle. Some people were adamant. They were like, oh, no, you have to wear the black. And other people were like, oh, no, the black is too heavy. You have to wear the white. And I have to say, I prefer the white. Even though my hair color is dark. And, you know, I talk about bookending. I talk so much about bookending. And it it really creates the harmony. But because my hair is dark, I thought the, the black ones would work better. But I feel like they're just visually heavy and dark and it just something about it doesn't feel right and I thought I would never wear white sneakers but I put them on and I don't know they just they just work so there's something about a good fresh pair of white sneakers that just it's really modern they go with just about everything in fact we're seeing people wear you know white sneakers with dresses with jeans with suits with everything and honestly if you are a sneakers person 
you know, it's so funny. It used to be that when you would go to New York City or somewhere and you'd look around and you'd see everybody who had all the women and men who had sneakers on and you'd automatically know they were, they were a tourist. Who, if Because they'd have on their sneakers with their, maybe not with their dress. You know, that was kind of an 80s trend. You know, the nine to five girls, you'd wear your sneakers on your commute and then you'd slip into your heels during the day and, and Reeboks were all the rage. Um, and then it used to be that you'd go to New York City and you'd see, you know, all the moms with their, you know, purse slung over their ba- over their body, ma- made into a crossbody bag, and they'd have their sneakers on. And you could just, they just stood out as tourists. But in this day and age, everybody is wearing sneakers with everything, everything, suits, dresses, jeans, and you name it. And so if you like sneakers, then play with it, have fun with it. Ask yourself, could I wear sneakers with this? And that's going to give you a really modern spin. It's going to give you a different look, a fresh perspective. And it's just going to be a little bit different. So have fun with that. But just know if, you, if you're if you wearing sneakers, and by sneakers, I don't want you to wear the same sneakers that you wear for your morning jog or to the gym. This is where I want you to have your your what's the word, dress sneakers, <laughs> your, your more upscale casual sneakers, your sneakers that are not your workout shoes. And, you know, with white, it can be a little bit trickier keeping them clean, but it just brings a whole fresh spin to your look. Now, it's interesting that so many different people love different brands. Um, I personally, I, you know, I don't favor any one brand. I think there's a brand for everybody, but there are sneakers at all price points from, you know, probably $20 to, you know, hundreds of dollars. So just know that, you know, even the, the brand biggest, most expensive brand names, Balmain, Balenciaga, Golden Goose. I mean, you could get like really, really expensive Gucci designer Louis Vuitton, designer sneakers, if that's your jam, or if you just want to get a great pair of Adidas or a great pair of Skechers, you can get high fashion sneakers literally at all price points. So don't be daunted by that. And if you haven't worn sneakers out in public, rethink it. There's so many great twists and spins on on sneakers, so many great styles. You can do a high top, you can do a slip on so many great slip-ons that a lot of people have gravitated towards over the years that are just, they're a little bit more polished than a lace-up sneaker. So, you know, don't, don't knock it until you try it. But I encourage you when you go out to look for some shoes this summer, especially if you have trips coming up where you're going to be doing a lot of walking, sneakers can be the bomb. So explore that possibility. All right. Number nine, purple handbags. Who knew? I don't know why purple handbags are hot, but I love purple handbags and I have one. It's not really purple. It's kind of a, a magenta, uh, but it's got some like purple undertones to it. Love it. I fell in love with it and I had to have it. And I just, uh, yeah, finally I treated myself. So I'm like, all right, it's a right in style. Even though it's not purple, purple, it's got some purpley hints, purpley tones in it. And it works really well with one of my favorite colors, which is magenta and love it. So purple handbags, again, handbags, you can find handbags at all price points. But I encourage you, if purple is your signature color, then maybe what you want to do is go and invest in a purple handbag. What this means is you're going to be seeing a lot of purple handbags. And you're going to see them at all price points. If it is your signature color, I have a lot of clients who have a signature color and quite a few who wear purple a lot, then go and invest. I encourage you to spend some money on a purple handbag because one, you're gonna be right on trend now, but then that's going to become a signature piece for you for years to come. Even when it's quote unquote out of style, it's still your style and you will get much more mileage from that than you think. And the same is true with number 10, green accessories. I know that might sound weird, but we're seeing a lot of green and I love green. I think there's so many great playful ways to wear green. My mom came to visit us at the boutique a couple of weeks ago, and this is a great way 
to repurpose what you already had. Because she came in, she had on the best outfit. She had on just some simple jeans. And I think she had on a leopard print top and a simple denim jacket. I think it was a blade. No, it was a blazer. I can't remember. Um, but it was a blazer. And then she punctuated her look with her green ballet flats and a small green. Kelly, it was she had Kelly green, and the flats and the shoes were about the same color. They matched with the same green crossbody bag. And so she had a really neutral outfit, leopard print, I think it was white, and then denim. And then she accented it with the Kelly green and it, the crossbody bag and the flats that I hate to say they matched, but they did match, but it worked really, really well together. And it really just punctuated her look. And that's a great way to think about something like green accessories, or if you want to bring in another one of the season's hottest colors in your accessories to make a statement. It, you don't have to bring in all the colors in your clothes necessarily. You could take something that's really, really neutral and then what that does is it brings the focus to your simple accessories. You could have designer or you could have something from, you know, around the corner, from the flea market, from the thrift store, whatever you want. But it really brings the focus and it pulls your look up to date. It gives it a fresh perspective. And also, you know, if green is your signature color, now is the time to, to jump on that. You're going to be seeing a lot more green in everything, shoes, jewelry scarves, bracelets, handbags, and you're just going to be having a lot of fun with that. So, all right, there are a couple more that I'm just going to throw out there. We're not going to dive into, but one you probably already have in your closet or your jewelry box, hoop earrings. Now, what we're seeing this season are called statement hoop earrings, which means a little bit bigger. Don't go too big. Again, listen to podcast episode 31 secret power of accessories, and that will help you to know what size is right for me. Statement hoop earrings, we're seeing a lot of shrugs, which, you know, it makes sense. This is the year of the dress. And if, <laughs> chances are you've got a wedding uh, coming up or some sort of party or special event, you're going to be looking for a dress. Well, shrugs are a great piece to go along with your dress. We're also seeing kerchief headscarves. You know, I've kind of played around with some headscarves. I'll be shooting some, some videos soon. But headscarves can be a great piece to add in on a bad hair day, or especially if you have longer hair and you have more of a boho style or more contemporary style. There's so many great things you can do with headscarves. Clogs. Those of you who love clogs are in for a treat because clogs are hot this season. I used to be a big clogs girl. I had my dance goes. I had like five or six pairs of those things years ago. And to be honest, I still love clogs. I don't know. I'm a 70s girl at heart. And clogs to me are just very, I think, very 70s. I've had several great pairs of clogs over the years that I think about and I love. In fact, I remember my very first pair of clogs. I was in seventh grade. They had the wood sole and they were brown suede. I remember how those things smelled. I remember how I felt when I wear them. I remember how those things smelled and I remember how they felt when I put them on. And I had this fabulous brown plaid skirt that went with them and a brown corduroy blazer. And I thought I was the bomb.com. So that was my little memory, cog memory from back in seventh grade. But that was my first introduction to clogs and I have been a fan ever since. So maybe it's time for me to go out and, you know, get myself a new pair of clogs. Now the last thing, funky sunglasses. I know I've been seeing so many fabulous celebrities wearing some fun sunglasses. You know, Elton John's of course got all always got his funky sunglasses, but look around at, you know, what your friends are wearing, what you're seeing in the, in social media, all the influencers on Instagram, there are some fun and funky sunglasses. So if that's your style, if you love expressing your personality through your sunglasses, now's the time. And, you know, why not build a wardrobe? And, and that can also carry over into your glasses. Build wardrobe on your glasses, bring in some green accessories. If that's your color, bring in some purple or some of the other colors of the season into your accessories, your sunglasses or your regular eyeglasses. So why not? So those are my top 10 accessories trends for spring, summer, 2022. Number one, pearl core. 
Number two, gold chain necklaces. Layer them up, ladies. Number three, silver jewelry. Number four, feminine sandals. Number five, lug sold sandals. Number six, flat form shoes. Number seven, platform boots. Number eight, sneakers of all shapes and sizes. Number nine, purple handbags. And number 10, green accessories. Ladies, I hope you loved this episode. And I hope this gives you some really good inspiration to get into your own closet and play. See what you've got in there. See how you can put it together in new and different ways. Again, layer up some gold chain necklaces. Pull out your pearls. Wear those new and different ways. If you've got clogs tucked away at the back of your closet, you know, maybe they're going to be right. Maybe it's time to get some new ones. But pull out your sneakers. Give those some more mileage. And really just see what's, see what you already have and then go out and see what you can find that will quickly and easily update your look. doesn't have to be complicated. Just a few simple tweaks and you will be rocking your accessories and they will be right on trend. So again, go grab my spring summer trends ebook. Super quick. It's 10 bucks. And I poured my heart and soul into that to give you great tips for wearing the trends for breaking down the most wearable trends and really to help you understand what to even look for. So go grab that. I think you're going to love it. So far, the feedback I've gotten from that has been incredible. Clients have been telling me they love it. It's just, it's giving them just the little edge they need. You don't need to know everything that's coming down the runway, but you do need to know how you can wear the trends in a way that will be right for you and for your lifestyle. So that's what I did in the trends ebook. So go grab that. And also, if you do want to know more about color, let's work together. I would love to help you wear color with confidence because as I step in to writing a book on color, it, I just really want to share my best knowledge. And I want you to be able to walk into your closet every morning and put on color and know without a shadow of a doubt, this works for me. That's the first thing I encourage you to do is look at the color that you wear. Don't worry about the shape. Don't worry about the style. Don't worry about you know how it fits you yet. But ask yourself, is the color right? If the color's not right, don't even look at it. My mom, I was talking to my mom this weekend. She's like one of my style icons. And she actually got this beautiful periwinkle blouse from us, from Style Finder. And it is a, yeah, that's the color of the season and or the color of the year, actually. But she bought it because she loved the color. And when we went down to Pinehurst this weekend, she told me I need to return that blouse. I bought it too big and I bought it knowing it was too big, but because I love the color, I had to have it. And then she stopped herself and said, you know, I just need to stop doing that. I need to not do that anymore because I settled for something that didn't fit right because I was in love with the color. And so that's one thing. I mean, I know she fell in love with the color, but if the fit's not right, it's not going to be right for you. You're going to be settling for it. You're going to be pulling at it. It's never going to feel right. And it's not going to be a valuable asset to your wardrobe. So stay away from that. That is my style tip for the day. All right, ladies, thank you for being here with me. I love you guys. I will see you next time. Mwah. Have a beautiful day. Thanks for tuning in to Style by Mary Michelle, where women come to get dressed in seven minutes or less. If you enjoyed this podcast, I invite you to leave me a five-star review on iTunes or wherever you're listening. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Style by Mary Michelle and shop our boutique at shopstylefinder.com for the best in upscale casual apparel. Better yet, if you're in the Raleigh area, come see us. We're located in the North Hills Shopping Center, the premier shopping district in Midtown Raleigh. For details and links mentioned in this episode, be sure to see the show notes. Have a beautiful week. <laughs>